Now this here story I'm about to unfold is about a dog. Dog went by the name of Rex. Now, Rex. Heard some people calling him Rexy or Rexter. Once even Rexterfer. So I'm not really 100% sure which was his actual God-given handle. But anyhow, Rex, Rexy, Rexter, whatever you wanted to call him, was your regular shit eater. Lapped it up like it was fresh apple pie cooling off on a kitchen windowsill. I just about never seen so much shit consumed by a single living organism in all my time. Now Rexy, he'd eat any shit he could get his paws on. He'd eat little nuggets of chicken shit. He'd hunt down little curls of cat shit. He'd even eat great big dried out husks of horse shit. And he'd even eat own shit, which he seemed to like best and approach with most preference. He'd just go and lay that swirly twirly shit with and his legs braced wide apart. And then he'd do a U-turn and vacuum that shyster up. Sometimes you'd see him out in the yard burying a bone, or so it would seem, and then it'd turn out he was unearthing some old mummified cat poop. I mean, he was crazy for that shit, had a nose for the stuff. And since we had several cats roaming around the last time I checked, there was a lot of shit for him to find. Rex used to go around looking for the shit as eager as a kid hunting eggs at Easter. Yep, old Rexy. Now... Not only did he like to consume crap in high quantity, but he also liked to drink water out of the outhouse toilet bowl. So much so we'd had to put a padlock on the outhouse door come fall and hide the key under an old lawn ornament. But then Rexy just dug a huge goddamn hole on one side and slipped under. And shortly afterwards you can imagine there was that hollow lapping sound often occurs when a shit crazy dog gains access to your outhouse. I remember we used to sit in the living room with Grandmammy knitting noisily in a old rocker never rocked. One had door stops under the sledges. Grandmammy saying the rockin' put her asleep while she was trying to sew her sweaters. And Rexy would be sound asleep on the mat in front of the fire, and somewhere outside there'd be the faint o sound of the old outhouse toilet flushing, a hollow, swirling, toothless sucking sound. And he'd lift up his head, the way dogs always do, and then when it stopped, he'd lower it again, place it between his paws. I'm telling you, he had a sixth sense for that outhouse. Now, where was I in the story? Uh, Rexy. Uh, no, nope. yeah, that's it. Now, when it came to own shit, Rex laid it anywhere his ass happened to be at the time he needed to go. But that shit never happened to be there very long. Miraculously disappears the word. My dad hated the dog, called it a useless shit machine. Couldn't see much point in it. The way he saw it, he said, ate excretion at one end, excreted excretion at the other. Nothing but a useless shit machine then. Shit crazy, he used, as he used to call it. Now on the other foot, my mama loved old Rexy more than anything else, roamed around the house on more than two legs and had a tail. With several cats roaming around, you could just imagine the amount of shit. If you can't, Picture yourself pouring out three bags of cement and mixing it into mush with water and then throwing it over your shoulder with a snow shovel. Times that by two, multiply that by the amount of times you've ever seen a shit, and you're only halfway there, my friend. And Ma could only shovel so much shit at any one given time without a ticker stopping. And before we had Rexy, Ma'd have to clean those little shysters up herself with a crusty old shit edge dustpan and brush. But when Rexy arrived, that was no longer the case. Wherever a crap happened to occur, Rex happened to appear, and it happened to disappear, miraculously. Cats were clever. They purred and played and pooped, and looked pretty and sat stiff when you were having guests round for Thanksgiving. But dogs have character, and character goes a long way. Now when it comes to defecation, a cat can't crap for shit. When cats crap, they seem to malfunction, never quite seem capable of the correct consistency. It's either hard and husky, or short and slimy, soft and slimy. We used to have a cat crapped in the kitchen and then tried to bury the stuff under the lumpy old linoleum, usually just pouring the slimy shit all over the place and then walking shit prints all around the house and oh heck it wasn't a pretty sight for anyone's eyes to see. Then we had this other cat eventually taught to use a, we eventually taught to use a sand tray and then come the next fall we bought it a sleeping basket and it started to use that instead. And then Rexy would stick his snout in there and try to eat that shit. And he'd get his head stuck and start howling and oh heck, dogs may be dumb, according to some people. But cats are the crown of craziness. They may be clever, 
companionable and after their own comforts, but they're crazy. And crazy and clever just don't comply together. I remember the time a new one my daddy bought, Clum a Rain Tree. I know, I know, Clum ain't no word I know. Then got stuck up in a branch above my tire swing, and that little shyster just would not come down. So what we did, I took hold of the tire and walked it back till my hands had raised above my head high as my boy arms would permit them to go, and then I'd wing it. It'd fly up in a full loop and try and knock the cat out of the tree. It worked after about seven goes or so. However, the cat sadly died, sadly, and I'm sure Rex weren't too pleased about the matter either. A new cat meant more shit. No more new cat meant no more new shit. Now Rex slept inside most days, usually in front of the fire, keeping a close eye on the cats. Dog slept with one eye open, I'm telling you, shit crazy he was. But he had a kennel out back, along with the tire swing, another one of my dad's great inventions. But he didn't much like it on account of the roof leaked, and they don't call it Raintree County just to attract the tourists. And anyhow, even if they do, back then they had a depression on, so even the white folks had to watch their folding money. So we didn't go in there much, except to see if any cats had been in there as of late and if they'd left him anything of edible interest. But you'd just as soon see a cat crap in a kennel as you'd a hare hunting a hound. Now I'm aware this story is a hard sort to define, far as definitions go. To prevent you from reading any further at the forfeiture of your intelligence, let me warn you that this here story is mostly about shit and where it goes and more importantly what it does when it gets there, if and wrecks don't get to it first that is. It's about crap, it's about cats, and it's about a shit-crazy dog would sometimes bark at your backside and snap at it if it couldn't find any. So you can see where I'm coming from, it's a hard sort to define. By Shakespearean standards, even harder. The way I always define one of them's is that if it ends happy, then it's a romance. And it's a tragedy if and it ends with everybody lying spread-eagled on the stage dead, presumably stabbed. This ain't one of them. Now I ain't trying to sound preachy, just saying there ain't no nail so hard it ain't got a head can't be hit with a hammer. Although I'll allow, it's a hard sort all the same. But I was getting ahead of myself, and firstly, there's one thing I got to tell you about Rex. Rex didn't belong to nobody. Not us, not nobody. Nobody knew where he came from, or why, likewise. He just pitched up one day with his snout sniffing low along some invisible trail which led into our family household and onto a rug really tied the room together, and so he decided to stay. My sister said he was an angel and my mother agreed with her. My dad said it was a defecate-eating devil and he'd put it down directly if in the spring he hadn't gone out of his shotgun last time he went shooting chipmunks and squirrels off of the acorn trees. The way I saw it, Rex was the helping hand my mother always wanted but could never afford. Of course, he couldn't do the ironing or wash the windows, but shit was a persisting problem in the bird household, and Rex, as I've said, was the solution. And so went the story. The story of Rex. Rex in Raintree County.